Phillips with the OT winner and McMichael with 10 shots. Oh yeah, this is going to be a fun season. We'll talk about it next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. The Capitals regular season will be starting soon, and I would love to talk Caps hockey with you one-on-one. -on -one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about your victorious Washington Capitals as they take down the Boston Bruins in overtime with an OT goal by Matthew Phillips. Matthew Phillips, he we've been talking about him quite a bit. He was the player that Spencer Carberry said he put the Caps coaching staff on notice because of his play. Well, he continued with that, pretty much cementing his future with the Caps. We'll talk about him in the show. A little bit later, we will talk about how this is going to be the year for Connor McMichael. Make no mistake about it, 10 shots on goal. I don't think you can really ask for anything more than that. But just to get it going here, we will talk about the Caps win and break down the game for you. And right away, McMichael scores a goal, just kind of setting the tone for the entire game. Now, don't get me wrong here. The Bruins put up a pretty big fight. And I know that, you know, they didn't have a lot of their starters in there. And the Capitals didn't have all of their starters in there as well. But in any event, this team impressed. Connor McMichael impressed right away. You know, within seconds of the start of the game, bam, he scored a goal. That's a big thing for him. You know, this is a guy that struggled, you know, last season. He was on the big team with uh, Peter Laviolette, got scratched, got sent down, didn't get, you know, uh, upset, didn't get all bent out of shape. He's just like, I'm going to make the most out of my opportunity. And guess what? His team that he played on, the Hershey Bears won the Calder Cup. Guess what? He is walking around with a little bit more swagger now. And he is not just Connor McMichael from before. He is Calder Cup winner, Connor McMichael. And I think that that swagger, that confidence that he exudes um, is what you're really starting to see evident on the ice. I think that he kind of saw last year and he thought to himself, you want to know something? This is going to be my last year that I put on the brown sweater down in Hershey. I'm going to make the most of this, but I am going to make sure that next season when I go into camp and when I start playing preseason games that I'm going to cement my future on the Capitals. And I ultimately do believe uh, that is going to be the case. Um, everything that we're hearing about there is that he is going to be on the wing position. I would ultimately like to see him at center. I think that ultimately that is where he is going to excel. Uh, if he continues like this, I see him playing in the top six. And I know that's a, you know, that's kind of a bold statement to make there, but I do think that he has been playing that well, that uh, he is, he is, you know, cemented that we'll talk a little bit more about Connor McMichael later in the show, but all things considered, this team was pulling on that collective rope. We take a look at the performance from Darcy Camper, who I got to say was a little bit shaky at first. I'm like, wow, Darcy's got some rust on him. He's really got to knock that off. But he did. He did do that. He got off uh, and just stepped up and, and played a big game. He made, uh, he, excuse me, he saved 16 of 20 shots and was really dialed in. It took him a little while to warm up, but once he was warmed up, he was in beast mode, and uh, that is what the Capitals are looking for is strong net mining. Historically, they have always had that. Uh, it was no different tonight as Darcy Kemper uh, really delivered. So 
just taking a look at this team, there's not a whole lot more to ask for. Two more uh, preseason games. Uh, this is going to be a good litmus test for, you know, the players that are on the fringe. I'm talking Hardy Hamann Octel. I'm talking, you know, Phillips. I'm talking Connor McMichael. But also, I have still not given up hope on Ivan Mirishnyshenko. Uh, I really haven't. I do think that, you know, I, I'm a bit mystified, to be honest with you, when it comes to him, because he just had that game in there and he played well. And all of a sudden he kind of just fell off the radar. Like, do, is there something that we don't know? Did he do something horrible? You know, did he just really screw up in practice? Um, I guess I will never know. But one of the things I know about doing these shows is you really can't uh, make, you know, have favorites. But one player that showed up and is trying to solidify his spot on the blue line is Hardy Haman Octel. Uh, and he made himself noticeable again right away, right off the gate, out of the gate there with that big hit on Milan Lucic. And Milan Lucic is one of those guys that likes to throw his weight around. He's kind of a big mouth. So to kind of just show, hey, I'm out on the ice and take notice. Uh, he definitely made his presence known. It was one of the things out there that we know that there are some spots up in the air on the blue line. I think that Hardy really, you know, established himself out there. Another player out there that impressed, but he, you know, was snake bitten the entire evening was Anthony Mantha. And it was not from a lack of trying. His feet were moving. He was skating. He was involved. It got knocked off the bar. Um, so ultimately, even though he didn't really pop on the score sheet, I do think that Anthony Mantha had a pretty good game, all things considered. Is it sustainable? That has always been the one bugaboo for Anthony Mantha. Two attempts uh, that he had off a Bruins defender right off the crossbar. You know, I, I was really kind of, and I am, I'm really kind of, you know, banging the drum for Anthony Mantha. I would, I really hoped he would have a great season and he still might. Uh, and then he was later stopped on a breakaway. Then uh, late in the third, uh, there was a late push. He hit the post on a wide open net. Unfortunate, but he was getting his opportunities. And sometimes that is half the battle uh, is, you know, just making the attempts, getting the shots on net, you know, putting yourself in a position to succeed. And I think that he did that. Now, let's just hope he can keep growing that. You know, I know that he is under contract, so we may as well make the most of our opportunity with Anthony Mantha on the team. Another player that really stepped up was Kuznetsov. And um, listen, it's always been my belief. And if you're an everyday of the show, you know that I talk about that. I think that he is going to have a breakout season that I know that he struggled last season, but we can't live in the past. I think that he's dialed in and I think that there is a rapport. I think that philosophically he thinks the same way that Spencer Carberry does. I see big things from Kuzi. Uh, Kuzi was showing promise out there with that sweet tic-tac-toe goal. Backy Kuzi Wilson money. That's what it was. I love seeing these players perform. And, it's and you know, I like seeing the new guys, but it, it always warms my heart when I see the old school guys. I see Backstrom. I see Kuzi and Wilson. Yeah, Wilson's already entering into that category. He's old school on the team. But to see the foundational pieces of the team, if you will, getting contributions, that was a big thing. Also, Kuzi, he made a great pass for John Carlson for the second power play goal of the game. And then Matthew Phillips scored the game-winning OT goal. Just all things considered, there is a lot to like from this game. And not a whole lot for me that uh, I think went wrong. I think that all things considered, this Capitals team played very, very well. Um, and, you know, the thing of it is, is I like that it was a battle. I, I You know, sometimes people are like, well, they made it close. Good. I want this team to get put through its paces. So at the end of the day, when the regular season starts, this team knows what they're made of. So, you know, we've already kind of sussed out who is going to be successful on this team. We know that Connor McMichael is going to be a big piece this year. We know that Matthew Phillips is going to be a big piece this year. We know that most likely Hardy Haman Octel is going to be a big piece on this team. Some of those pieces were unknown commodities before the start of the season. I know Matthew Phillips. I mean, I, I want to hear how many Caps fans out there had him circled as like, he's a guy that I'm looking for. And the only person that really kind of put, 
him on my radar uh, was on the 32 Thoughts podcast. Jeff Merrick was talking about him, that it was like this sneaky sleeper move that the Capitals pulled off. You know, uh, I heard everything about Max Pacioretty and I hold Joel, I heard about Joel Edmondson, but there wasn't a lot of talk about Phillips. And uh, I did see it in the transaction wire. And to be honest, I wasn't very familiar with him, but um, he has popped off the page. He is a smaller guy out there. He is making an impact there is a lot to be excited about. Now, one of the things that Spencer Carberry wanted to stress, and I know that to a certain extent, I kind of just believe this is lip service, is that even though there are players on Group B that seem to be the players that are not going to get a sweater in game one of the regular season, there's always a chance. There's always a chance that uh, Ivan Mirishnishenko could make it onto Group A. Color me skeptical. I don't really think that's going to be the case again. I am baffled about what he did wrong. I guess that, you know, if you looked at it another way that Matthew Phillips played that much better, that Connor McMichael played that much better, that Ivan Mirshnyshenko is a really great player, but he's not quite on the level of a Matthew Phillips. I mean, let's face it. He has the pedigree, you know, he has had more uh, time down in the AHL playing professional U.S. hockey. Uh, and then, you you know, you take a look at Connor McMichael, you know, a guy that's been revered as one of the top prospects in the Capitals organization for quite some time. I think that's what it all boils down to. I think that ultimately that if Connor McMichael was a little bit not as good as he's been playing and Matthew Phillips was a little bit meh. I do think that Ivan Mirishnyshenko would have a spot. It's And I don't want to say that he did anything wrong. I think he's done everything right. I mean, take a look at the game he played. The only thing he didn't do was score a goal. Again, I want to see a little bit more. I am not sold on the fact that he is not ready for the big team. I am not. And uh, as you as Caps fans, I want to hear from you. Are you all just as excited about Ivan Mirishnyshenko as I am? Hit me up on Twitter at DanCaps218 or at LockedOnCaps or... If you're watching this on YouTube, comment down below. Am I the only one that's kind of in this delusional uh, phase that I think that that Ivan Mirshnyshenko is going to be just this really great player that he could potentially be Alex Ovechkin 2.0? Please let me know, because if I'm the only one, then I'll stop talking about it. But for me, I do think that he is going to be a really big piece on this team in the future. Uh, I just don't want to feel like I'm the only one that thinks that way. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about Matthew Phillips. Pretty much, I would say, cementing his future with the Capitals. His performance tonight, his overtime game winner, I think really sealed the deal. We'll talk about him coming up. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do whatever you need to do. Uh, it's the same thing with a business team. If you're building a roster, do it to win the league you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, Assessment in virtual interviews. Hate waiting, Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employees find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job application. So if you're tired of, you know, going through paper applications, you need Indeed. It is the future. It is the present. Something I love about Indeed is that it does make it that much easier. So if you are working in HR, you don't have to physically go through all those applications. So Indeed knows what, what you need to get your business growing. So visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply cost per application pricing not available for everyone need to hire you need indeed All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The NHL season starts next week, and Locked On has put together the ultimate season preview for the Locked On Capitals fans. You can find the episode available now on this podcast feed. Just go over to your podcatcher of choice or on YouTube and find out what's going on with the Capitals and what we can expect from them this year. All right, in this next segment here, we are going to talk about OT winner stud Matthew 
Phillips, a small guy, but don't, you know, he's not going to let his size hold him back. He is still a competitor. Uh, he is one of the guys that said, you know, I don't really think of myself as a small guy, um, that when I play, I play big. So the, even though he is a smaller guy out there, he plays big. He's not afraid of getting physical. And where he excels the most is at the net front. And just he's always involved in plays that are being made out there. So he has really stood out and popped off the page. I do believe that this is going to be the season for Matthew Phillips. Again, with the OT winner, it, it, that's what it was all about. I mean, I loved him, and I think that a lot of Capitals fans, Spencer Carberry, everyone loves him. He's a small guy, but doesn't think of himself as small. He has put up points in every preseason game he's played. Again, so I think that certain things are coming into focus. Again, talk, getting back to Miro, I think that Matthew Phillips has just played better. I don't think that Miro did anything wrong. Phillips has just played that much better. Carberry said that Phillips has put the coaching staff on notice with his play in the camp and preseason. He skated uh, with Ovi Backstrom in line and practice, so coaches could get a good look at him last year, ranked second in AHL and goals, now making a serious case to crack the roster. And I do ultimately think he did do that by what he did tonight. Uh, he has back-to-back 30-goal -back seasons. Uh, so again, I think that he has done what he needs to do to you know solidify his spot on the big team, the Capitals. I think he did that before uh, tonight, but I think that definitely his play tonight uh, cemented his future on this team. If we even take a look at the box score for Matthew Phillips, again, OT game winner. We know that. Uh, but one goal and uh, two shots uh, with 15.28 of ice time. Uh, so when we take a look at Phillips, I'm not going to say that he figures to be in the top six, but I do think he is going to be one heck of a contributor. Uh, there are certain tertiary you know, players on the team that I don't know. I mean, what does this mean for someone like Beck Malenstein? What does this mean you know, for an Alexi Protus? Uh, if you just want to take a look at Alexi Protus and how he's performed, he hasn't really popped for me. He's played he's played pretty good, but I don't. It's a far cry from where he was last season. So I do think that there are you know some things to consider. Taking a look at Alexi Protus tonight: zero goals, zero assists, one shot on net, um, and thirteen twenty one of ice time. So. Again, if you're an Alexi Protus fan, that's great. But I mean, if for me, it's what have you done for me lately? What has he done this year for the Capitals this year? Uh, listen, it's not about what who you were last year. It's not about how he helped the Hershey Bears win the Calder Cup. It's not about that. It's what kind of player are you this year? And that's the same thing to be said for a lot of the players. Anthony Mantha as well. He was not great last year. Had a pretty good game this year. And, you know, it's not all about one game. Can he sustain that through the remainder of the preseason here? Uh, if he can, I think that his future is bright. But if you take a look at some of these players out there that haven't really popped, you know, Lexi Protus, for me, hasn't really popped, hasn't really impressed, hasn't made me take notice. So I think that to a certain extent, he has been put on notice that you're going to need to contribute or your future might be somewhere else, you know, potentially Hershey something like that. So it is an interesting thing. You know, Beck Malenstein, another interesting, intriguing player. I know that the Capitals have been hot on him for a while. I like his brand of hockey, physical, big guy, a lot to like about him. But has he really impressed? I think that the Capitals have a lot of options out there uh, for players that are looking for roles on this team. And we can't just say that, you know, historically this player's been this or that. It's who are they in a night-in, night-out basis. Again, taking a look at Beck Malenstein. Uh, zero goals, zero assists, one shot on net, 15.02. Again, and this is just a snapshot. This is just this game. I get that. But there haven't been a lot of moments where Beck Malenstein has just said, he's got that this year, man. This Beck Malenstein is just dialed in. Um, you know, and it's going to be tough. You know, there's other players in Group B that say, hey, if he's not quite what you need, we're over here in Group B, and B. We would love to, to be playing on the big team. I'm talking about Hendricks, Lapierre, Ivan Mirishnashenko, et cetera. So it is going to be interesting, and I think that there is some truth to uh, what Spencer Carberry said. Nothing set in stone. You know, just because Group A seems to be the starters because you see Ovechkin and Backstrom and Oshie and those kind of players in there, don't read too much into it. Again, I am a bit skeptical on, you know, on certain players if they're going to transition over to Group A. But I will say that if certain players don't pop, I'm talking to you, Alexi Protus. I'm talking to you, Beck Malenstein. 
that there are players over in Group B that are saying, hey, did you forget about me? I, I'm playing pretty good, all things considered. So a lot of things to consider, and I don't think that anything is set in stone uh, as of right now. It's going to be interesting to see ultimately who cracks the roster in the opening game of the season. And just like I've said before, just because they are on the opening night roster does not mean uh, that they are going to be there for the duration of the season. I would love it if that were the case. Uh, I'm just not totally sold that that will be the case. All right, so coming up here after the break, if you're an everydayer, you know that I've talked about for the longest time that this is going to be the year for Connor McMichael. Well, his performance tonight kind of proved my point. We'll talk about Connor next. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. You could bet on an upcoming Commanders game. You could bet on an upcoming Capitals game. It makes watching the games that much more exciting. This app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So if you know, if you're an everydayer and you follow this show, you know that I have spoke of quite extensively about Connor McMichael and how I perceive that this is going to be the year for Connor. And I still do believe that uh, just for the biggest reason is how he played tonight. 10 shots on goal and sustainability, not to mention the fact that he helped the Hershey Bears win a Calder Cup and really killed it there. Um, and his maturity, there's a lot to love about Connor McMichael. Uh, like I've said, he's far more mature than I was at his age. If I was playing on the Capitals and I was, a, you know, playing professional hockey and making that big money and they said, hey, uh, why don't you come over here? We got some bad news. You got to go down to our AHL affiliate and uh, help out down there. Cause you know, we need to work on your game a little bit. I might be, are you kidding me? Do you know who I am? Do you know where I was drafted? These young, these young guys, they're not, they're not wired that way. He took the humble approach. He said he was a little upset at first, but he went down there, kind of put his head down, concentrated at the task at hand, wanted to go one and oh, every game, and he did that. He didn't really struggle. He was pretty much consistent the entire season down in Hershey. And not to mention how he stepped up big in the Calder Cup and helping the Hershey Bears win big time. And tonight, getting involved, scoring a goal almost right away after the game started, those are things that really helped his case. Again, sustainability is one of the biggest things. We have seen this Connor McMichael before. One of my first interviews I ever did was with J.J. Regan, and we talked about Hendricks LaPierre, and we talked about Connor McMichael, and he said, listen, Dan, they're good players, but they weren't sustainable. And I know that that's been a couple of years since I had that conversation with him, but it still holds true. Is it sustainable? Can Connor McMichael keep this pace up for the duration of the season? If he can, then I think he's got a spot on this team. If he can't, well, I don't want to go there. You know where, where we're headed with that one, but as far as how he played tonight, we could not ask for anything more uh, from Connor McMichael. Just killing it out there. He scored a goal 26 seconds into the game on a Carlson rebound. I mean, I mean, you cannot ask for anything more. Part of it was right place, right time. But that's that hockey IQ, putting yourself in a position to win. He was there. Other things that were noticeable is his speed. He seems to be skating very well, uh, making great passes, and tried to put him in himself into a position to score goals. Check, 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 check. I don't think we could really ask for anything more from Connor McMichael. He did what he needed to do to help make sure that everyone noticed the Capitals brass, Spencer Carberry, the assistants, Brian McClellan. Hey, look at me. I'm that guy this year. This is going to be my year. I'm not taking this red jersey off and putting a brown one on. I'm not going to do it. 
And uh, I think he did that, you know, and again, I don't want to gloss over the fact of what I said before that it needs to be sustainable. I ultimately think he has what it takes this year. I want him to prove me right. I want him to prove it for himself. And I want to, you know, to finally be the year that we start to see some of these young players work their way up. You know, there was some hesitancy with uh, Peter Laviolette and some people said with Barry Trotz before him to integrate uh, some younger players on this team there. There were just, there was this mandate to get the most out of that 2018 rock the red era to win another cup that that's what they were laser focused on. They lost sight of the fact that there is a lot of great talent in Hershey and down in the stingrays and draft picks that are brewing in various leagues. But Spencer Carberry is a guy that is familiar with his organization. He's been there. He's done that. He coached the Stingrays. He coached the Hershey Bears. He's killed that at every level. He coached the Providence Bruins. He ran the number two power play in the NHL last season. If there is a guy to get this done, it's Spencer Carberry. Make no mistake about it. They just need everyone to pull on that collective rope and get everyone believing what he's saying. I think that he can send them in the right direction. There's not a lot of this hesitancy. There was a lot of rumblings with Peter Lavulette on this team. Like, is he the right guy? He seems to kind of have lost the locker room. He's just kind of this, you know, staunch, stoic old guy. And uh, this is a, a young guy, all things considered. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of team this will be with Spencer Carberry pushing the buttons. What kind of team this was going to be with some different blood, some new blood with Matthew Phillips, with Connor McMichael, uh, with, you know, uh, Achman Attell on the team. Uh, How are they going to play? A lot of these guys, you know, are outsiders. You take a look at uh, Hardy. He came from the Nashville Predators, came over here and uh, has done nothing but killed it so far. And, um, that's what we're hoping for is continued progress. I know that there's only a couple preseason games left um, for those players to prove themselves. If they can continue to get that consistency, then I think great things will happen. Uh, you got to imagine that there's going to be a round of cuts here soon. And, you know, follow the show on Locked On Capitals on Twitter, YouTube, wherever you find your podcast, and I will have you guys covered. It's going to be an interesting time for the Caps as it is a bit of a transition. This isn't the carbon copy. Capitals 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 22. We're going to do it this year with this lineup, with this coach. It never happened. It did not happen again. So it's good to put 2018 in the rear view. It's been some time. Just just let it go. Let, Let it disappear. And let's concentrate on this new batch of Capitals fans. Let's stop living in the past and concentrate on what the future is for this Capitals team, I do believe. It will be bright. All right. I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And are you a fan of other DC sports? Well, Locked On has got you covered. There's Locked On Nationals, Commanders, and Wizards. So no matter what major DC sport it is, Locked On has got you covered. Not to mention Locked On NHL, NHL News on YouTube and wherever you find your podcasts. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.